Hello, welcome to module 4 in this subject, Art Appreciation. So in this module, we will discuss about the visual elements in the area of tone. So tone is the lightness or darkness of a color. It is used in art to suggest form or to create a dramatic atmosphere. So the visual elements again of tone defines the lightness or darkness of a color. The tonal values of an artwork can be adjusted to alter its expressive character. So tone can be used to create a contrast of light and dark. It can also create the illusion of form and to create a dramatic or tranquil atmosphere to create a sense of depth and distance to create a rhythm or pattern within a composition so these are the use of tone so my selection of artworks in the after this one i will show some artworks that is illustrated next slides have been chosen because they all use tone in an inspirational manner so i have analyzed each of these to demonstrate how great artists use this visual element as a creative force in their work so let's start number one tone as the contrast of light and dark so i have here example artwork it is a basket of fruit is a striking display of a summer fruit that is uncharacteristically for caravaggio appears dark against a light background this is a dark and then the background is light it is considered to be the first freestanding still life in the western art and is the only true example of the genre by the artist caravaggio demonstrates outstanding um, skill in the way he captures the delicate variations in the colors and textures of the produce so the fruit this one in the painting is over ripe hey okay, over ripe so the fruit again is over ripe um, showing signs of decay with the leaves this one shriveling as they begin to dry out so this is the example of a tone as the contrast of light and dark next tone as form so stanley spencer the diminutive eccentric english artist painted this self-portrait two years after he left the slade school of art so it displays a total mastery of the academic skills that were taught there particularly his use of charuscuro which by his time had come to refer to the dramatic contrast of light and dark tones in painting. So the inspiration for the portrait obviously draws on Spencer's love for Renaissance painting and by association it inherits those classical qualities. However, it also has an element of romanticism in its introspective vision. What makes this painting so appealing? Appealing to modern eyes is the combination of Spencer's intensive personal scrutiny, the accuracy and expressive vitality of his brushwork in the painting of his facial musculature and the extremes of tone which hold the form together with such dramatic tension. That is number two. And then number three, tone as drama. The painting of Guernica is the depiction of the artist's horror at the bombing of the small Basque village during the Spanish Civil War. So Pablo Picasso, I do believe that you still remembered uh, this name in the previous module, painted this huge canvas. This is very huge. They have a 11 feet and 6 inches by 25 feet and 7 inches for the Spanish pavilion at the Paris World Fair 
to focus international attention to the barbaric act. So the Guernica is probably the most dramatic painting of the 20th century. Yet, it is painted in tones of black and white without any hint of color. So Picasso deliberately avoids the using color to its emotional import which would detract from the dark despair of the subject. So he returns to the black and white tonality of the newspapers to reinforce the reality of his stylist drama and to present the brutality of the atrocity as to autocratative fact. To emphasize this relationship, he staples the hair on the body of the dying horse, this one, with the lines reminiscent of newsprints. This one, this is a newsprint. Print. So, the absence of color in the work also lends a note of respect for the innocent victims of Guernica. That is why this is only a black and white color as a respect for the innocent victims of Guernica. Number four, tone as tranquility. The Angelus is a Catholic devotion that can be traced back to the 13th century. So the Angelus bell would ring three times a day to call the community to prayer just like here in the Philippines. Traditionally, workers would stop their activities just like this one at the sound of the bell and say the Angelus prayer in the morning, at noon, and again in the evening. So this painting by um, Jean Fuswa Millet portraits two Barbizon peasant workers, these two peasant workers, who have stopped harvesting potatoes to say the evening angelos. Same with us today. Even we are in the mall in Taglaran City, uh, the moment we hear, hear the bell, um, that's the time that the workers in the mall will stop working and pray the angelos prayer. So the man has he reverently removed his cup. This one is a cup. And the woman joins her hands. Just like in this hand gesture, he joins her hands in prayer. So they both bow their heads in respect as the Angelus bell peals from the church tower. So I do believe this is the church tower on the distant horizon. So Millet's use of subdued tones captures the peace and tranquility of the moment while the bright tones of the sunset is one. The bright um, light of the sunset gently silhouetted their um, bowed heads to highlight the humility of their prayer. They bow down their heads just like again in, this, in our time today. And also number five, tone as depth and distance. So Charles Scheller, the American painter and photographer, was associated with precisionism, the first homegrown modern art movement in the USA. So the precisionist described the urban and industrial landscape of a modern America with a crystal cut vocabulary of geometric forms and dramatic perspectives. So the canyons, canyons is a cubist influenced cityscape of transparent and opaque cello taste derived from building just like this one facades, windows, and rooftops. So Scheller colors these shapes using a graduated scale of tones to create an atmospheric impression of aerial depth and distance. And the title of the painting is Poetic Metaphor, linking to the urban landscape of streets and skyscrapers in modern America to the geological landscape of rivers and ravens in the American wilderness. So thank you for listening and please don't forget to answer the evaluation quiz. Thank you.